everyone and welcome to my second review for the Artiza products that I was um, so graciously sent. And um, I introduced it in my previous video where I um, reviewed the 36 watercolor pans. And basically, um, the company Artiza contacted me to see if I would be interested in trying some of their products and um, in exchange for doing honest reviews on my YouTube channel and social media. And after speaking with them a couple of times, um, I agreed to do it. Um, I looked through all of their products and I was very intrigued by the vast array of products that they had um, and mostly of the price point. And <clears throat> what I've seen so far is that the products seem to be, with one exception, which I'll talk about, um, sort of a, in between a student grade and a professional grade product. And the price point is incredible. So I'm going to list the prices and links to the products in the description box below. Now, I was also offered to be an affiliate, which means that if I share a, a specific link to their products that I would be paid for any purchases that people made. And I declined that and they were totally fine with it. Um, I personally feel that if I'm reviewing products, um, I should not be paid for that. I've been paid by just receiving the product itself and hopefully f um, finding something that's going to be useful to me in, uh, for teaching my students and even for myself. So I'm mostly interested in these because of the price point, because many of my students who are beginners um, really want to get you know a good amount of supplies but they don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on professional quality paints and papers and brushes and that's where a product like this comes in it is wonderful for that purpose um, it's also wonderful for experienced artists who might already have a lot of supplies but might want a fun set like this for specific kinds of work and so far what I've seen I would use these products myself um, for specific applications. So today I'm going to be reviewing this box of 60 watercolors. Okay, these are the Arteza 60 watercolors premium set. It is 60 12 millimeter tubes, which is a nice size tube. And it comes in this beautiful box, which I mean, it comes with coupons for your next purchase. Um, and this company, by the way, is an American company out of Wilmington, Delaware. So the box is really great. And one thing that I really loved about the box is that on the lid, it has every color, its name, its pigment number, whether it's opaque or transparent, and its light fast rating. And I'll be talking about that when I'm doing the swatches um, or after I've done the swatches. But <clears throat> what I noticed when, um, but basically I made dot cards to swatch for you. And so I could look at every pigment and every pigment number and I wrote those down. And what I noticed at, it, at first is that there really are not any transparent pig pigments. And the reason why, and the reason why they're so affordable, and most student grade paints are like this, is that they're using either white, which is a very inexpensive pigment, and so it can extend the other color, the other more expensive pigment. And they're not using terribly expensive pigments. So for instance, um, the ultramarine blue is indeed a real ultramarine blue. That is not a terribly costly pigment. Cobalt blue, on the other hand, is very expensive. And so what they've done is they created a hue that's light cobalt blue by mixing white with phthalo blue, okay? So <clears throat> that is very, very common in not only student grade paint, but also some professional paints, all right? Holbein, for instance, which is a very expensive paint brand, has a quite a bit of, um, of their color range that has white mixed into it for convenience mixes. So it's not that it's a bad thing, but it helps keep the price point down. So I noticed that the majority of these paints are opaque because they have had white added to them. There was only one transparent pigment in this whole set, and that is ultramarine blue. Everything else is either opaque, which you see the solid square, so the majority are, and then a vast majority of the single pigment, just traditional colors, are semi-transparent, okay? So that's fine too. And remember, these paints can be used for specific applications. They are not the paints you're going to choose for a split primary palette. 
Um, you can have that separately if you're interested in learning color theory. However, for a general box of 60 paints for less than $40, um, this is an incredible value. So we're going to swatch them out and see what we think. I really, really liked the pan paints, so I'm expecting to like these two. They also sent me this lovely pad of paper, which is the product I'm most excited about. This um, is their um, expert line watercolor paper. It's 100% cotton, mold made, cold pressed. It's double sided, which is great for practicing. And it's, it says ideal for watercolor techniques and mixed media. This paper is wonderful. It's 140 pounds. It comes in a nine by 12 pad with 14 sheets. And I wanna say it's around $20, which seems like a lot. But when you start to price papers that are 100% cotton, like from Arches or Fabriano or Stonehenge, it's actually a very good price point for this size sheet. So that is this is the paper that I used to make my swatch cards. And 60 colors is quite a bit, so it took me two sheets of paper to do that. So what I thought I would do is go on time lapse and just swatch out all of these colors, all right? And to do that, I'm going to use one of the water brushes that they sent me. And this is their premium line of water brushes. And I have to say, it's probably the nicest water brush I've used. Um, the water flow is, is great. It's really easy to control. The brushes are really nice. And I'm, I'm very impressed with this. I am not going to use it as a water brush, but just as a regular brush. So that means I have a jar of water here that I'll be swishing. I'm just going to move this all over a tad. So I'll be cleaning my brush in here and then wiping it off on a towel. It's just going to make it easier for me. Um, but for travel and doing field work and urban sketching, these are fantastic. I really like them. And just to show again, as I did in the other video, it comes with many, many brushes, including a really some really big um, flat brushes, some really fine points um, for round brushes. Um, this, this, this one's even bigger. So this is unusual. Um, you don't find that too often. And a fine point as fine as this to do detail work. So I'm very, very pleased with the water brush so far. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put this on time lapse and swatch out these colors.
Okay, so the swatches are mostly dry now. And what I thought I would do is sort of go over my general impressions, but also talk about some individual colors. And I have to say, my general impression is great. I, I think these are going to be a lot of fun. And I would not hesitate to recommend them as a, as a great set with a wide variety of colors for beginners or for those who are looking for some really fun colors to do some specific projects with. Um, and, they, and you don't want to break the bank. Um, so with that said, let's just go through some of these colors. Um, my first impression as I was swatching them out is that they wet really easily. I made these dot cards um, very early this morning, so they had started to dry. Um, I will say that if you were to put these into pans instead of leaving them in the tube, um, I think because a lot of them have so much white, there's so much white in these paints as you look around, um, they might tend to crack and chip off a little bit. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'll play with that and see what happens um, because I would love to squeeze these all out in pans and just have a big rainbow to play with. But um, I think they're probably going to be better stored in the tube and then just grab a selection of colors that you want to work with and squeeze a little bit like this onto some paper or a palette. Um, dot cards are great to make because um, these, you know, it's not a whole lot of paint, so they don't tend to crack. And you can, you can put your brush right on these and pick up paint for quite a while. So dot cards last a lot longer than you would think. Now, I also wanted to show you what the tubes look like. So this one here is Vermilion. Okay, they're a nice size tube, very, very nicely made. The caps grow on really well. They feel quality. Um, so this is Vermilion PR4. It's a single pigment paint. And on this side, it has these plus signs. So they either have three or two. And if they have three, that means they are light fast. And if they have two, I wouldn't trust it to be light fast. So you can still use it, but don't um, use it on a painting that you're going to frame and hang in a sunny window kind of thing. Um, you, you know, those kinds of things just don't work out. <laughs> so the, the, if the color is not light fast, it will fade or change over time. But so much information on this tube. They even have the transparency. Not many companies do that anymore, so I'm very impressed with that. And so this one says semi-transparent, which is what I see here as it dried. So I, I just wanted to show you what the tubes look like. So my general impression is the colors are exquisite. I mean, really, really beautiful and very vibrant, and they dry just as vibrant as they go down. So they don't lighten up a lot, which is probably due to a lot of the white pigment, which will hold the color better. Um, but they, they definitely go on very smoothly and very vibrantly. Now, obviously titanium white PW6, and you're gonna see PW6 in a lot of these colors, okay? But going across, what I did is if they were um, if they were not light fast, I put an X by the name. And there are not many colors that are not light fast. Orange yellow, it says, is not light fast. Vermilion, um, neon pink, which I would expect because neons are never light fast. Um, orange red, which is PO34, okay? Blush, which is PW6, so white, and PR21. Now, the interesting thing is, is when you come up here and you see PR21, PR21 this has a, light, a high light vest rating. So I'm not sure what the difference is. Maybe it's the combination with white or when this pigment is um, muted out a little bit more, it's not as light fast. But this one says it's not light fast. And then on this sheet, they are all light fast. So that's pretty great. There's only a if there's only one, two, three, four, five colors in the whole set that are not light fast. Okay, so that's great. Um, so that that's another thing that I noticed. Again, as I said before, a lot of these paints, especially when you start around here, are going to start having a lot of white in them. Most of these do not, and quite a few of these initial colors are single pigments, which is great. So going across, yellow pale and ye lemon yellow are both um, Hansa colors. This is Hansa yellow, this is Hansa yellow light. 
So those are single pigment paints. They are semi-transparent, okay? Going across yellow ochre is PY42. That is a traditional yellow ochre pigment, and you'll see that in a few other mixes as well. Um, I would call this semi-opaque. The gamboge is quite transparent, even though it says it isn't. Um, and it is PY1, so over here, plus PO13, which is here. All right. So for some reason, the combination of these two is light fast enough for a high light fast rating. So that one um, seems to me semi-transparent. Um, to transparent. It's pretty transparent. So you can see the, the graphite line. Like over here um, with the white, you can see that the white kind of hit it. And then you'll see some of the more um, opaque paints. You could, you know, they sort of hid the, um, the graphite line. But I can just tell by the amount of, of white paper that I can see shining through. Okay, like here, the ultramarine, I can really see that white paper shining through. That is the only truly transparent pigment in the whole set of 60. So moving across some more, we have some beautiful reds. Now the vermilion would be a perfect warm red in a split primary palette. So truly, if you were going to use it for a split primary, the only drawback to this palette, to these paints, is that they're going to be semi-transparent instead of totally transparent. I think they'd still work fine. So, for, so your cool yellow is lemon yellow. Your warm yellow is gamboge. Your warm red is vermilion. Your cool red, I would say crimson. Your cool blue would be phthalo blue. And your warm blue would be ultramarine. So you've got some great, um, actually, I don't think I have any other blues. Prussian would be a better, Prussian would be a better cool blue, I think, than the phthalo. It's a little bit cooler, and next to the ultramarine, it's a great, a great contrast. And, and traditionally, Prussian blue was used as a cool blue. So then you get into the earth colors here, just with this one, burnt sienna, and it's a mix of two colors, all right, which is not unusual these days, all right. Um, it's a fine burnt sienna. It does have some nice granulation. It's PR101, which is an earth red, and PBR6, which is an earth brown. It's, it's actually pretty nice. Some burnt siennas are a little bit more on the orange side, like Windsor Newton, but that's not a true burnt sienna. So this looks pretty good to me. Um, crimson is PR21 and um, PR13, so it's a, a double pigments, but it's a beautiful color and I would say semi-transparent. Rose has white in it, so there's where the white starts to come in. PW6, PV23, and PV19. So it's a mix of white, dioxazine violet, and quinacridone rose. This one, or quinacridone magenta. This one. Beautiful color, though. Um, useful. Useful. And there's only three pigments there, but it does have white in it, so it's going to be more on the semi-opaque side. So lilac um, was the only one that streaked a little bit for me, but I think that was more user error than the paint because none of these paints streaked. They all laid down very smoothly. So this is another pigment that has white in it, PV23, which is dioxazine violet plus white. Here the violet is just PV23, and it's a beautiful version of it. I have no issues with that. That's dioxazine violet, and it looks great. It's not as transparent as some, um, and it does tend seem to have a little bit of granulation, which is unusual. So it might be just a lower quality of that pigment, but it's it's great. Um, then I go into some blues here, and these are all these are both very cool blues. This is a true phthalo blue, PB15, and this is a mix of phthalo blue and PB PV23, which is dioxazine violet. So they basically just added a little bit of this to this and got this. Okay. Then I go into Ultramarine, which is perfect version of Ultramarine. No problems with that one. Great granulation. Um, nice and transparent. Then they start to talk about Cobalt and Cerulean, which are real pigments. These, however, are not. This is not real Cobalt. For some, that might be a plus because it wouldn't be toxic like Cobalt. But it basically is Thalo Blue plus White. So you could make it with this color and this color. Okay, just a stronger version of it. Um, so that one is it's not true cobalt. Same with cerulean. It's white, um, phthalo green, and ultramarine. Okay, I'm sorry, and phthalo. So it's a 
it's a little bit on the vibrant side for a true cerulean blue okay but it's beautiful it's a beautiful color anything that has white in it i would consider semi-opaque all right then we've got some greens these are all phthalo based greens just mixed with different colors this is mixed with one yellow this is mixed with another one this is mixed this is a cooler yellow mix warmer yellow mix and this one is mixed with phthalo blue it's called deep green these are all lovely greens um, could easily be made into more natural greens by adding a little bit of burnt sienna to them or some red then we have raw umber which truly is gorgeous <laughs> it's really beautiful but it does not look like any raw umber that i've ever used before doesn't matter it's just a name this is not true raw umber anyways it is a mix of a brown earth and a yellow ochre. It's really beautiful. It has nice separation and granulation. Then we come down to burnt umber, which is fairly nice. Um, it's, it's yellow ochre and also a brown earth, just a different combination. Not that unlike the raw umber. They're very, very similar. Okay, but it's fine. They're both earth colors. Um, they're not as transparent as some of the earths that I have but I think they would look lovely in landscapes. Um, so they're black, they call noir, and it is basic PBK 11, basic black, and it is not a very shiny black. It's very matte and very, very opaque. So whenever you see black in any of these mixes, that lends op opacity to it, okay? So apricot is um, a white base pigment with a little bit of PO 13 in it, so it's going to be semi-opaque to open. It's probably opaque, actually. Viridian is not a real viridian. It's a mix of three pigments, phthalos, Hansa yellow, and white. It's um, True viridian is incredibly transparent and luminous. This one is not the same. It's a lovely color, and it could be fun, but don't be fooled. It's not viridian. The gray is absolutely beautiful, and it reminds me a lot of the Holbein um, Davies gray, or gray of gray. Um, really beautiful. It's just white and black together, but it's lovely. I, I mean, it, it would make gorgeous clouds. The sepia is three pigments, um, an earth brown, a black, and... I can't tell what that says, but it's three pigments. Oh, maybe some... Um, ultramarine blue or something to make it deeper it's fine it's i mean it's not as trans like glowing as some sepias that i have but it's a perfectly suitable warm brown um, it does dry rather matte almost gouache like and that's because this black that they use is incredibly opaque sky neon pink orange red all all of these here except for this one these three are all mixed with white Okay, this one is three pigments. It's basically an ultramarine, phthalo, and white. This is a dye, C145410. It is totally fugitive, super fun. I probably would never use it. <laughs> I just wouldn't. I just, I'm not a neon girl, but it would be fun for journal work or something if you like bright colors. Orange red is PO34, single pigment, semi-opaque. Naples is typical it's um pw6 which is white and py1 which is a hansa yellow and almost every naples white in the universe has white in it so that is not an unusual thing this is really useful for fields i use it a lot for fields seaweed is the introduction of four pigment paints now typically i don't buy four pigment paints because you just can't mix them with anything else without getting mud. Um, it's a beautiful color though. And so I don't think you would have to mix it with anything if you used it straight for some foliage or something in a distant landscape. It's beautiful. It's a really lovely color. It goes on very smooth, has beautiful granulation. It had some French ultramarine in there. But four pigments is a lot. And that's where you start to understand that this is not a professional grade paint. How There are a few professional brands that have four pigments, not many. Usually the top is three. Um, saffron is a mix between yellow and orange. It's very much like gamboge, but just a little bit more opaque. Blush is another one of those white mixes, so it's going to be more opaque. Bordeaux has three um, 
three pigments in it. It's got an earth red, an ultramarine, and white. Lime um, is it's pretty transparent acid, ye um, acid yellow green. PY3, which is Hansa yellow light, and phthalo green. And this is a really useful color and, and fairly transparent here. Um, ballerina is three colors with, um, of course, the white. Very pretty color, though. If you're, especially if you're painting a portrait with, with lighter skin tones, that could be really useful for the cheek area or something like that. Latte, four pigments. Tan, four pigments. They're gorgeous. Um, I would use them. They're light fast. Um, but just be careful you're not mixing other colors into those. And the nice thing is, is this box tells you which ones have more pigments, which ones are single pigment, etc. Toffee has three pigments, again, with white and black. These all have white and um, black in them. So they're going to be rather opaque and matte. Light apricot is a white and yellow ochre mix. Really useful. It's kind of like buff titanium. It's pro it probably is. It's probably how they make buff titanium. Um, it's opaque. Um, I could see that being really useful. The peach um, is three pigments, also white and black. Mauve. Um, three pigments, also white and black in them. So gorgeous colors, right? And then onto the last page. Um, some re These are some of my favorite colors. They're just gorgeous. And they remind me so much of the Holbein um, white mixes that I love. And so you just have to be aware that they have white paint in them. And you're just, you're going to use them accordingly. I would say... They're kind of between a watercolor and a gouache, right? So I'm going to show you a little exercise on black paper to, to sort of show you how these shine too. Um, Aegean. These are all three to four to five pigments, all of them. Aegean. Gorgeous, gorgeous blue. Stone. Four pigments. But look at that color. It's just beautiful. Ice is white and French ultramarine, beautiful pigment, beautiful color. Sage, olive, four pigments. Taupe, three pigments, but what a color that is. It's the perfect color for mushrooms. <coughs> Wineberry, three pigments. Um, nice color. And it's got um, it's got white and black in it. And then a PR13. Eucalyptus, four pigments, incredibly opaque, this one, but what a gorgeous color when masked out with a lot of water. So remember that opaque paints, if you use them subtly with a lot of water, can be really beautiful. Um, the pear color is four pigments, lovely color. Violet tulip, one of my favorites in the whole set, is four pigments, but gorgeous. I mean, I'm excited. I am looking forward to having fun and doing certain kinds of projects with these paints. Um, indigo is very typical, PB15 and, and black. So they've made it with the phthalo, so it's a little bit lighter. T actually, typically, indigo would be French ultramarine and black. So this is a little bit lighter, but it's lovely. However, their black, again, is very matte and opaque, so this paint will have that tendency. Bubblegum is a white mix and has that dye in it, <coughs> like the neon pink. Going to be really fugitive. I don't know why they don't have list, listed as that, but I would mark this one as fugitive. Lavender, three colors. Nice, nice, but you have these really great purples over here too, so this one's pretty opaque. Spiced apple, three pigments. Unusual color. I mean, I could see where that might be kind of fun. Mint is three colors with white and black, and Jade has five, five pigments in it, including white and black. So it's gonna be very, very opaque. <coughs> Excuse me. So those are the colors. Now I wanted to show you, I'm just gonna use, um, use these swatch, um, swatch cards to show you something. So I have here just a piece of black watercolor paper. A couple pieces, and I'm going to show you. Where's that water brush? Now, 
first I'm going to show you what happens with the ultramarine. So here's my ultramarine blue, which was the only transparent pigment in the whole set. So if I paint this on this paper, you are not going to see it. Okay. Now, if I go to the cobalt right here, which is has white in it, and paint it on this paper, do you see how you can see the color? Because it has the white in it and because it is opaque. If I go to this jade, which has five pigments in it, look how nicely that shows up on black paper. So if you are someone who likes to paint on darker papers, these paints are going to rock it. Totally rock it. Um, let me just show you a couple more. Here's Spiced Apple. See how they, how they stand up? Um, Violet Tulip. See? And the ultramarine just totally disappeared. Let's try Aegean. Stands up. So that is a really easy way to test for transparency too. If the color disappears, then you're pretty sure. Let me just try some on this one that are more semi-transparent. So for instance, the lemon yellow. It's going to show up a little bit just because of the nature of it, but it pretty much disappears. So that's a semi-transparent paint. Let's try the vermilion, which is such a gorgeous warm red. See, it's semi-transparent. All right. It's going to disappear into the paper. All right, so I'm going to do one more test here, and I'm going to look at how I would choose a split primary palette. And I would choose the lemon yellow, the gamboge, the vermilion, perfect warm red, it's amazing, the crimson, the ultramarine, and the Prussian. That is a perfect split primary palette in lighter hues. It's not ideal because they're not all transparent, okay? But it would work really well, I think. And to be honest with you, it's the best I've seen in a mass-produced um, paint line. It's the best I've seen hue-wise. So one of my tests, when I test colors for split primary palette, is I mix warm red with cool blue, and I get instant black, and it works. Guys, this is exciting. And then my other test is I mix warm blue with my cool red, because I want to get a really nice violet. A little more cool red. Oh yeah. So that's really good news. This, um, this box of paints, and they do come in smaller selections. You can get 12 tubes, um, maybe 36 tubes. And I guarantee you that those sets come with these more basic pigments and that these here are add-ons when you get these larger sets. So if you are on a tight budget and you want some split primary colors, these are excellent. I, I really have no problem recommending these. No, no, I would recommend these over the Windsor Newton paints because the Windsor Newton paints just do not have a suitable warm red. <clears throat> this is almost perfect, except for that it's not transparent. Okay? So I'm really pleased. Um, I'm very excited to have these paints and, and, and this paper. This paper is fabulous. Um, I'm going to do one more thing, not on these specialty colors, but on some of these colors that are dry, like ultramarine blue should lift fairly e easily if I scrub it with a wet brush. So the they are not, I'm guaranteeing you, they're not using honey as a binder. Yeah, that lifts nicely. Um, and then perhaps, let me see what the vermilion does. So if I scrub it with a wet brush and then blot it, it should lift. So this one's a little bit more staining. 
which is typical for a red. Let me see <clears throat> about the earths because those should lift. Yeah, they lift fine. So they're really acting very well for me. I'm, I'm very pleased. Um, the next product I'm going to be reviewing is their line of watercolor pencils, which look promising too. So I am, I am thrilled with these paints for, um, you know, student grade prices, but a much better quality than any of the other student grade paints that I've used. And I've used, I have all of the Cotman colors, and to me, those used to be the best. But these, these outshine those for sure. The only thing I will say is that you're not getting real cobalt, real cerulean, but you're not going to expect that. Even in, in the Cotman, it's going to be called cerulean hue or viridian hue. Cotman has more transparent colors. Um, not many, but they do have more. <clears throat> but from what I saw with these here, this is really all you need for transparent colors. Um, I give it a thumbs up. All right, everybody, thanks so much for your time, and I hope this was helpful in some way. Make sure you check the description box below for um, links to all of these wonderful products. And I want to give a big thank you to Artiza for contacting me and having me test your beautiful products. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care.